very strange time in my life. Sometimes a character's anguish, paranoia, depression, or madness simply jumps off the screen. No! No! Lisa! Get away! Please! No! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down the top 10 movies that depict mental illness. What are you doing? You threw the goddamn ball into the fence! Christ oh, almighty! Oh, oh, oh. You threw the ball into the fence! There's nobody there! For this list, we've assembled a collection of movies in which mental illness is central to the plot and which show it in a nuanced way. Did you hear that? Bianca just said that that's why God made her to help people. Number 10, The Deer Hunter. I can't Never. believe you guys. Come on. What the hell am I doing you? This is not it. Starring a plethora of great American actors like Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep, and Christopher Walken, this post-Vietnam War drama revolves around three Russian-American steelworkers and their memories of the war. Just come home. Home. Talk to me. Take talk to me. It also explores the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, on the soldiers and the people around them. Stevie, you gotta do it. You don't do it, they're gonna throw you in a pit. They throw you in a pit, you're gonna die. Isn't that like it, a you gotta do it. We find them in 60s Pennsylvania as they try to lead normal lives, but they are unfortunately still plagued by what they lived through while serving their country. You gotta listen to me. You wanna stay down here and die? Thanks to its themes, emotional performances, and original vision, The Deer Hunter won five Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director, as well as Best Supporting Actor for Christopher Walken. For Christ's sake, Mike Stevens getting married in a couple hours. I don't know what the hell we're even doing. We're talking about hunting the last time before the army. The whole thing, it's crazy. Number nine, Lars and the Real Girl. Hello, Lars. In this sweet indie drama, Ryan Gosling once again gets cast against type to play Lars, a lovable introvert with a deep desire to connect to people, but with an even bigger fear of attempting to. Calm down. How are you gonna Calm down, together? okay? Now. He's talking to a doll, baby. Shh, shh. We just gotta get through this somehow, okay? I just don't know how we're gonna do it. I don't either. So instead, he orders a sex doll and gives it a name and a backstory. Uh, her name's Bianca. Does he have sex with her? Babe, that's what she's for. Yeah. Ew. Ew. His concerned family takes him to a psychologist who suggests they treat her as real, and the whole small town soon follows suit. Oh my, no, 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 no. No, I mean, pretend that she's real? <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I mean, I can't, I'm just not gonna do it. She is real. Along with his delusions, Lars' mental illness also has symptoms of schizoid personality disorder, which manifests itself in his solitary lifestyle and rich internal fantasy world. Bianca, this is my friend Mrs. Grinner. His new companion, Bianca, is ultimately a tool to help him overcome his emotional coldness and what happened to him in the past. Lars is one of Gosling's best performances, and the movie itself earned an Oscar nod for Best Writing, the original screenplay. You know, Bianca's a, um, a missionary. Well, was a missionary, right, sorry. Because she was raised by nuns. But now she's on a sabbatical so she can experience the world. Isn't that neat? Number eight, Benny and June. Hey, Benny. June's on the phone again. Well, tell her I'll call her back, find out what she wants. It's an emergency. She says you're running low on peanut butter super chunks. If you're a 90s kid, then chances are that every time you hear the proclaimers, I'm gonna be 500 miles, you think of this movie. Benny, played by Aiden Quinn, is the older brother of the mentally ill June. What is going on here, June? Mrs. Smale? Smale, please, let me explain. He is also her caregiver following their parents' accidental deaths. The siblings are soon introduced to Sam, a cinephile with an odd personality who also happens to be illiterate. I'm Sam. So I hear. Despite Sam's eccentricities and June's outbursts, the two immediately connect. Oh. 
Essentially, a romantic comedy about two social misfits, Benny and June was definitely one of the few in this genre for a long time. While Sam and June's mental conditions may make them stand out from society at large, at least they've got each other. Number 7. Shine. Uh, exercise, yeah, yes, that's right. Get some fresh air around, into those I? lungs of yours, David. Uh, uh, because the weak get crushed like insects, don't they? Like grasshoppers. Our next entry is a biopic about famed pianist David Helfgott, played by the great Jeffrey Rush. A child prodigy, Helfgott grew up with a father who didn't tolerate failure and who wanted his son to be as highly competitive as he was. At the age of 19, he is sent to the Royal College of Music, where he started to exhibit manifestations of schizoaffective disorder. Just destroys everything, really, doesn't it? After winning the concerto competition, things get worse, as Helfgott suffers a mental breakdown and subsequently spends years in and out of mental institutions. I knew I'd find you here. Uh, I've been a naughty boy again, haven't I? I, I miss my hat, haven't I? I think I have. That's Come true. on, David. <laughs> I, I might get into trouble. I might, I might get punished for the rest of my life because I'm flawed. I'm, I'm fatally flawed. Although the film's accuracy is disputed, the biographical drama was a hit at the Sundance Film Festival and won Rush a deserved Best Actor Oscar for his performance. <laughs> Number six, Melancholia. I smile and I smile and I smile. You're lying to all of us. If you know Danish director Lars von Trier, then you know his films are not the easiest to digest, although this next entry is probably his most widely seen movie. The earth is evil. We don't need to grieve for it. Starring Kirsten Dunst and Charlotte Gainsbourg, Melancholia revolves around two sisters named Justine and Claire and follows what happens during and after the former's wedding. Life is only on earth. And not for long. Although such a seemingly happy event is occurring in their family, there is also tragedy of epic proportions looming, and this tragedy comes in the form of a rogue planet that may or may not collide with Earth. I'm afraid that the planet will hit us anyway. The film is essentially a metaphor for depression and was based on the director's own experience with it, particularly through the character of Justine. Number five, Girl Interrupted. So what's with that, huh? The next movie on our list is about a female patient named Susanna Kaysen, played by Winona Ryder, and her year and a half stay at a mental institution. Are you gonna watch? Afraid so. That's why there's so many fuzzy-legged women around here. Based on Kaysen's memoir, the drama also stars Angelina Jolie, Elizabeth Moss, Whoopi Goldberg, and Brittany Murphy. Kaysen is hospitalized for attempting suicide and is diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Um, I, I didn't try to kill myself. That's the kind of thing you talk about in therapy, honey. Not here. While at the institution, she becomes particularly infatuated with a manipulative sociopath, Jolie's Lisa Rowe, who takes special pleasure in influencing the women around her. Why is all your shit on her bed? Huh? Huh? Why? Why? Where's Jamie? You don't know what you're doing! What the hell are you doing, Lisa? Why is she so fucking Although the film received mixed reviews, it is still remembered for Jolie's performance, which earned her an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna miss you, Susie Q. Number four, Black Swan. I was just trying to be perfect, thank you. <laughs> Up next is a psychological thriller about a ballerina whose ambitions make her lose her mind. Black Swan revolves around a modern production of the classic Tchaikovsky ballet, Swan Lake, in which the director wants to have the same ballerina play both the white and black swan. Number 
Natalie Portman is Nina, who is the favorite, but she doesn't quite grasp the sensuality of the Black Swan. At least not the way newcomer Lily, played by Mila Kunis, does. He made me your alternate. Because just in case. This makes Nina paranoid that she'll lose the part, and she soon begins to show signs of obsessive compulsive disorder, delusions, and an array of eating disorders. Leave me alone! <laughs> The film became a surprise box office success and earned Portman the Best Actress Academy Award. That was perfect. Number three, Silver Linings Playbook. That's OCD. That's crazy. What OCD? I, I want my son to watch the game with me. So I sue me. No, sit down. Sit down. Come on. I, I want you to watch the game with me. I do, but that's not superstitious. Our next entry was one of the most successful films of 2012 and showed audiences that Bradley Cooper could be a serious actor too. You have to do everything you can. You have to work your hardest. And if you do, if you stay positive, you have a shot at a silver lining. Directed by David O. Russell, the film was adapted from the novel by Matthew Quick and centers on the life of Pat Solitano Jr., a man who tries to piece his life back together after suffering a mental breakdown. I mean, people fight. Couples fight. We would fight. We wouldn't talk for a couple weeks. That's normal. She always wanted the best for me. She wanted me to be passionate and compassionate. Pat was also treated for bipolar disorder, and upon his release from the mental institution, he moves back in with his parents. Stay for the game, spend some family time. I, Dad, I can't. Look, I'm ready to go. What do you mean? Spend family time. Well, you mean OCD superstitious time? <laughs> Come on, your dad needs a win. Help him out. He's later introduced to the recently widowed Tiffany, played by Jennifer Lawrence. Because that must have been f***ing crazy, because I am so much crazier than you. Keep your voice down. The romantic comedy drama was a success with critics and audiences alike. It was also one of the first movies since Benny and June to successfully mix romantic comedy with a serious topic like mental illness. I mean, humanity is just nasty and there's no silver lining. Wow, that was a great synopsis. Number two, A Beautiful Mind. I need a map. This next movie is a biopic based on the life of mathematician John Nash, portrayed here by Russell Crowe. New freedom communicates to its agents through codes embedded in newspapers and magazines. And that's where you come in. The film focuses mostly on his life after he is approached by the Pentagon to help them crack the Soviet telecommunication code. So what am I now, a spy? Eventually, Nash becomes obsessed with searching for hidden messages and begins to think he's being followed. Piers have no choice. Oh! In many ways, his paranoid schizophrenia was probably fueled by his passion and mathematical genius, but the film was criticized for misrepresenting his life. John has schizophrenia. People with this disorder are often paranoid. However, it was adored by audiences and won four Academy Awards. John, exactly what's the difference between genius and most genius? Quite a lot. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Listen up! There is a storm coming! I don't think I'm ready yet. Dr. Wilbur? It's all right, sweetie. I'm still here. Olive, um, <clears throat> Uncle Frank didn't really have an accident. What happened was he tried to kill himself. Mary Elizabeth, I think you're really gonna regret that, you know, sure. haircut when you look back at old photographs. <laughs> Go wash up and then help me clear the table. Now that's how I'm gonna clear the table. Number one, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. A little change never hurt, huh? A little variety. Our number one choice was based on the same name novel by Ken Kesey and stars Jack Nicholson, Danny DeVito, Christopher Lloyd, and Louise Fletcher. Well, I have to disagree with you, Mr. McMurphy. These men are members of the war, just as you are. In this drama, Nicholson plays Randall McMurphy, a man accused of the statutory rape of a 15-year-old girl who is sent to a mental institution in Oregon. Here we go. <laughs> While there, he notices that the doctors are more focused on sedating the patients than helping them become healthy members of society again. 
Jesus, I mean, you guys do nothing but complain about how you can't stand it in this place here, and then you haven't got the guts just to walk out? I mean, what do you think you are, for Christ's sake, crazy or something? Mm -hmm. The film remains a timeless cinematic achievement in its telling of a story of human courage and determination, not only in the face of mental illness, but of dictatorship too. The business of this meeting, Mr. Cheswick, is therapy. It won in all five major categories at the Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor for Nicholson's performance. There's Ratchet, look, look, the chief put his hand up. The chief put his hand up, look, he voted. So, do you agree with our list? My place is all cleared up now, you want me to clear yours? What is your favorite film depiction of mental illness? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. No, she